Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video we're going to be looking at several different types of laptop docking stations. I'm going to show you around this small office that I've been working to set up, and we'll look at how some of the different types of docking stations are configured, how they're physically plugged into the monitors and accessories, and we'll also look at how a small office network closet should be structured. This is a follow-up video to my previous video on laptop docking stations where I showed how to configure one in Windows. And that video was really popular. Thank you a lot for all of your comments and feedback. And that's why I decided to do this follow-up video. I wanted to show a little bit more about how the hardware is configured and how you physically plug everything in. I've got a few different types of docking stations in use in this office. We're sort of in the process of migrating to newer models, so we've got a range of docking stations, and I thought that would be helpful to kind of record and just give you some examples of how you would plug in your docking station in your own home office. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here. I'm going to walk around a little bit. I'm going to show you some of these different desks, some of the different models of hardware, and how everything plugs in. I'll also show you a few settings on some of the monitors and how to change the inputs on them. If you're looking for instructions on how to actually configure a dual or triple quad monitor configuration in Windows, you're going to want to watch my earlier video where I actually uh, show the Windows settings. Um, but this is more of a uh, hardware based video, which I hope will also be helpful to some of our many working from home employees and friends. At our first desk we're going to be looking at, you'll see we have a pluggable USB-C 4K docking station. This dock retails for around $200 on sites like Amazon.com. You'll see on the front it has several USB ports as well as a headset and a microphone jack. I like to use one of the USB ports on the front for a receiver for the wireless keyboard and mouse. Always try to use wireless accessories wherever we can and just, you know, a few less wires to have to run. When you're doing dozens of desks, you do want to try to simplify where you can. Um, so on the back of the dock, you'll see there's a few different connections. There's the two DisplayPort connections, which plug into the DisplayPort in connectors on the back of the monitor. Now that's something I want to mention that that some monitors also have DisplayPort out for daisy chaining. So for example, some of the more higher end Dell Professional and Ultra Sharp series monitors are able to be daisy chained. So you could plug, you know, without a docking station, you could plug the laptop into one monitor, plug that monitor into the second monitor, and so on. I don't really use that technology, but it does exist on some of the hardware that we buy. Um, just wanted to mention that on there, um, that you plug the output on the dock into the input on the monitors. There's a few other ports on here. There's the power in the power connector for the AC power power brick. There's the USB-C cable, which is what you plug into your laptop. HDMI port. So this would support up to three monitors if you had a third monitor hooked up to HDMI. You've got an Ethernet port. I always like to plug into Ethernet if you can, uh, rather than using Wi-Fi give you a faster, more reliable connection. You've got several USB 3.0 ports on here. You can tell that they're the faster speed because they have the blue connector. So basically when this user uh, would get to their desk, they would just sit down. All they would need to do is plug this into the USB-C port on the side of their laptop and everything should automatically be recognized and come up for the laptop. Before we move on to our next desk and docking station setup, I want to show you one other thing here on these Dell monitors, and which is when you press the menu buttons, you'll see that they have a selector for the input. So typically you would set that input source. You might leave it on auto, in which case the monitor would automatically select which input to use. But sometimes you may need to manually select a specific input, for example, VGA, DisplayPort, or HDMI. If you plug it into the HDMI port and it doesn't work, you know, that might be something that you might want to check is just make sure that the input source on the monitor is set correctly. And you could, like I said, you could either leave it on auto to let it try to auto detect the correct input, or you can select a specific input. Another thing I might use this for is if I have two computers hooked up to one monitor and 
if for whatever reason it had trouble doing auto select, I could use this selector to switch between com multiple computers. Moving over to our next desk, we have a Dell WD19TB docking station. This is the same type of docking station as I showed you in my previous video, so I won't, I won't go over it too much here. You can see it does have connected the same way as the previous docking station with the two DisplayPort connections, two USB connections, Ethernet, power adapter, your receiver for your wireless keyboard and mouse here in the front. Let me mention again these uh, USB connectors because I see a lot of times people don't hook those up. And the reason I always want to try to have those hooked up is because that activates the USB ports in the monitor. So we're going to kind of move this around here and I want to show those to you a little bit more closely. A lot of monitors have USB ports built in, which is great for accessories like webcams, flash drives, portable external hard drives. You'll see on this monitor, there's two right over here on the side, and there's also some additional ones along the back. And like I said, those are just great for accessories. You don't need to use them, obviously. You know, you could just totally omit hooking up these USB cables, but I do like to have them, and you know, you can never really have too many USB ports. So, I've also got two laptops over here, and I wanted to go over this again as well. So with this being the WD19TB dock, you can see on the connector it has a Thunderbolt logo, which looks like a little lightning bolt. If your laptop has Thunderbolt, you want to make sure to get a Thunderbolt capable dock. That's just going to give you the best performance. Not every laptop has Thunderbolt, not every dock supports Thunderbolt. So that's why I also brought two laptops over here. And hopefully you'll be able to see this. I know it's kind of small on the dock. Let me just maybe shine a flashlight on here, maybe to show them a little bit better. So the two USB-C connectors on the sides of these laptops. This one has a DP logo, which is DisplayPort. And then the one below it, you can see here, has the Thunderbolt symbol. So for this laptop, you would want to get a laptop, a dock that has Thunderbolt. This one would be fine with a normal display port dock. They're pretty much backward compatible with each other. I just, for best performance, if your laptop has Thunderbolt, try to get uh, a Thunderbolt compatible dock. I'm going to move over here to this other docking station. This one is also a WD-19. It is not Thunderbolt. So just to show you what its connector looks like, this one only has a, the DP logo on it for display port. It also doesn't have the little lightning bolt symbol on the front. So again, very similar models. Just the one over there is for a faster performing laptop. Over here at our next desk, we have a pluggable USB-C docking station. Similar to the one I showed you earlier, this one is not quite as fast, not quite as uh, capable. It has two HDMI ports and a DVI port here. One issue I've noticed with some of these is that the HDMI 4K port only works with certain monitors. So depending on the capabilities of your monitor, you may want to use an, the HDMI 2K and the DVI connector as opposed to uh, just using two, D two HDMI connections. So you can get a DVI to HDMI cable that's a straight, you know, just a gender changer cable so with a DVI connection on one end, HDMI on the other would plug right into your monitor. Other than that, pretty similar to the DisplayPort model with the power supply, the USB-C connection, Ethernet, and USB ports. One other setup about this this particular desk. The person who sits here has an ASUS laptop. Most laptops can draw power to charge themselves directly over the USB-C connection. The ASUS laptops, I've noticed some of them are not able to draw power through the USB-C, so they'll just eventually die because they'll keep running off battery. So 
in this particular person's case, we had to run a separate power cable to power the laptop as well. Most case, most of the time you won't need a separate power cable. Everything for the laptop should come straight through the USB-C connection. Occasionally you will need to run a separate power wire as well. These docking stations retail for around $175, so it's slightly less expensive than the DisplayPort model. This is kind of the more lower end that I would want to use in any of my setups. Uh, whereas the WD-19TBs and WD-19s that I was showing previously, those may range anywhere from $250 to almost $400 now. So you've kind of got a range of, you know, the WD-19TB being the best, then the 19, then the pluggable 4K, then the straight pluggable. The next docking station I'm going to show you is going to be another Dell docking station. This is the WD-15. It's a smaller slightly older model compared to the WD-19. As you can see the connection is, is very similar though with this one being a DisplayPort capable model. The dock itself back here much smaller. These docks have an HDMI, a mini DP or mini DisplayPort connection, VGA, Ethernet and then the USB and power connections. These ones you might need some special cables as well because not a lot of monitors have mini display port. So for example this one is hooked up to its two monitors with an HDMI to HDMI at the monitor and mini DP to DP or mini display port to display port which is the larger connector on the other side on the other end of that cable. Another thing I just thought I'd mention about the Dell docks is that they're all firmware updatable. So periodically Dell will release software updates for their hardware. And you would just download that from Dell's support website. Or it may be through the Dell command utility. It may automatically update. Which is just nice. Sometimes they'll fix bugs or you know improve performance or you know add features to the dock itself. It's not just a static thing that sits there on your desk. It's almost like a mini computer in that it needs to be updated as well. Another type of dock I wanted to show you is the Dell ePort docking station. This is sometimes called a port replicator as opposed to a dock. You'll see it's an older model. These were really nice and very common in that they fit basically every type of Dell professional laptop latitude or precision manufactured between around 2008 to 2017 or so. So you may still see these in the field. You may still be provided one of these by your IT department or you know whoever's providing you with your IT equipment. Um, still very common for a lot of different types of laptops. Being phased out now in favor of the USB-C that you saw uh, previously in this video. This type of dock the laptop physically connects onto this e-port connection here. You can see that with this laptop where I would just set it on top, click it into place, and then lock it so that it can't accidentally be ejected. I like this a lot. It's a very solid connection, but you know everybody wants their things to be lighter and smaller and faster, so they've gone away from the large e-port connection into the much smaller USB-C. So we'll unlock it, eject it, and you can see that e-port connection at the bottom of the dot at the bottom of the laptop. Port wise, these docks are very similar. And if you've watched any of my earlier laptop videos, you may have seen these in those videos as well. These docks also have USB, Ethernet, DVI, or display port connections. And like the others, this will also support three monitors if your laptop supports it, if you connect them to the VGA cable as well. This dock also has legacy ports for serial and parallel connections, as well as PS2 style mouse and keyboard connections, which probably nobody uses anymore. But like I said, this is an older model and it was meant to accommodate a very wide range 
of laptops. Also has an eSATA, USB, headset, microphone on the side. Here was that lock button that you saw me slide earlier. This one also has a spacer on here, which we can take off like that. If your laptop has a larger extended battery that sticks out of the back, you can slide that. Depending on the size of your extended battery, you may need to either have it in that this position, that position, or use a spacer. Just depends on the length of your the physical length of your laptop and the type of battery. So, like I said, you probably wouldn't see one of these unless you receive an older model laptop, anything manufactured prior to around 2017, which was when this style of connector was phased out. Just going to walk around here and show you the equipment a little bit more. Our nice planar uh, monitor stands. These do come in dual, triple, and quad monitor varieties. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll see I use these quite a lot. Now that I've shown you a few different types of laptop docking stations, let's walk over and take a look at our network closet. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this office was made for about 20 to 25 people. Obviously, much fewer now at pandemic levels of staffing, but that's what its capacity is roughly rated at. And I just wanted to kind of show you how the networking equipment is set up. If your network equipment doesn't look like this, that's not a problem. Unless your network equipment is all over the floor, in which case that's a terrible problem. I take a lot of pride in setting up clean office networks, and hopefully your own network administrator does as well. So, let's just take a look at this small network rack here. And we'll start at the top. Up there at the top you can see there's a temperature monitor that makes sure that things aren't getting too hot in here. We do have a vented ceiling and some small fans behind me to keep air circulating. Starting at the top you see we have a network patch panel, neat patch cable management, two 48 port unify switches, another neat patch cable manager, another patch panel, Fortinet firewall, an Edgemark phone router, a UPS here, and you can see when I hit this, it's got enough power, it's got enough battery capacity to run all of our equipment for 13 or 13 minutes should the power go out. There's a trip light PDU, a small network switch which is needed for our phone system, and then over here on the far wall you see we've got our cogent fiber optic interface. So this is just a small network set up for an office of around 20 to 25 people. Try to keep it clean. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to do a lot more different computer training videos as well as uh, automotive repair videos in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I will try to respond within 24 hours. If you have any product specific questions, feel free to ask those as well. Try to give me as many details as you can. You know, if you're having trouble with a specific model of laptop or monitor or docking station, tell me the model numbers and I may have some experience with it or I may be able to point you in the right direction of some resources that will help you get it set up. Stay safe out there and have a great day. Thank you.